Thank you for joining us today on the Sister Leadership Podcast with Diane Wilson, recorded live from Orange County, California. If you'd like to subscribe, click on the link below, dianewilson.com, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Diane Wilson. Welcome to our brand new Sisterhood Leadership Podcast. We've been meeting as a sisterhood for over 10 years, and recently, We were talking amongst ourselves as leaders on what we could do in this very different season and very different era in the life of our church. 10 years ago, um, most of the women in our sisterhood were either not married yet, no kids, or they had had grown kids and uh, time. So we were able to meet every Friday morning. Well, recently I was looking at how many people were able to come on a Friday morning and how many weren't. And it, it just seemed like, crazy for us to not make some changes so that we can reach more women and um, and help more women develop in their leadership. So we're excited about this new leadership podcast, um, including different leaders every single week. Um, we're having a conversation. There's going to be questions asked and answered. And my heart is to make everything practical because leadership has got to apply to our real life, not just in theory. And so uh, thanks for joining us. And we really hope that you enjoy this month as we focus on, of course, our Bible, which um, we love. We call it the Bible Book Club. And um, Bible in a year is amazing. This is my 17th year around the block. And of course, uh, this month we're focusing on one of my resources, It's Time, and this is a leadership book. So thanks again for being with us and hope you enjoy. I'm Pastor Diane Wilson from Newport Church and today on our Sisterhood Leadership Video Podcast, we have a very dear friend and special guest, Dr. Alicia Ritscholi, who is the author of this amazing book, Anonymous. You are going to absolutely love her. So happy to have my beautiful friend, Alicia Britscholi, with me here today in my home. And I um, want to just like say welcome. And I've got to tell you, this book that Alicia wrote changed my life. And there's a story behind how we even met. I had um, seen an Instagram post from my friend, Darlene Check. She had said to everyone, you need to read this book. And so um, I love dolls. We've known each other for a long time. And so I'm like, I need to read this book. Okay, I'm going to order this book. I ordered it and I read it. And it was the most life-changing book, not just for a summer, but for an entire season. And what I love about um, Alicia is she wastes no words. So there are, you know, there are, there are books we read and we're like, can we just get, like, where are we going? <laughs> we don't know where we're going. There, is no, there are no wasted words here. Um, she's an extremely gifted author. And this theme of Anonymous was so profound. And so I, I thought, oh, how can I get Alicia to be part of our sisterhood world? And I was thinking, um, let's just ask. Because, you know, I, I don't know what you can't ask for. So I contacted her, looked her up online. And, send an email it's like you know if you want to contact alicia i'm like will i ever hear from her i don't know next thing i get an email back really quickly you're so lovely and uh, it's probably one of your team but you're still so lovely (laughs) and then um the dates all worked out everything was like perfect and you insisted in the most lovely way to um connect with me before you came and i really appreciated that because um we've never built anything here at Newport Church or in our sisterhood based on a big name or a celebrity. We, we actually are very relationally based. And so um, the good thing was I had a relationship with um, Alicia through her impact on my life, <laughs> but she didn't know me. <laughs> so I put all this, uh, I say the fact that she trusted me in that moment to say I'll come was like, Thank you. Um, anyway, all that to say, we had um, a, a full room. Our leaders were so excited because I had like asked everyone, please get this book, please read this book. It's going to help you. It's going to change your life. It's going to give you perspective. And then um, <laughs> my husband, Jonathan, said, have you actually like ever heard her speak? Now, we're booked in. The brochure is sent out. The registrations are like by the hundreds. Uh, no, I have not actually. He's like, are you serious? Uh, I said, yeah, but 
Look, what could go wrong? I mean, seriously, all if 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 Alicia, this this is this is like if, even if she just reads like. <laughs> so when she came to um, our conference that year and got up and and she first stood on the platform and she the platform and prayed. You are different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I call you like my special fairy. It's <laughs> not a criticism. It is like, it's a term of endearment because you know there are people that like, they get up and they're like, they've got their thing, but you are not, that you don't have that pressure of having to be something. Mm -hmm. And to know is to love. I love you so much. Mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Okay, so I then asked you, so this is a book I wrote a few years ago called Gone, if I could please include at the end of every single chapter a piece of gold from here. Mm -hmm. And you've graciously allowed me to do that and your publishers graciously allowed me to do that. But the, the theme of Anonymous is, um, you know, Jesus is 30 years old, 30 years of Anonymous, and then three years of public ministry. Mm -hmm that was a blessing and then a crucifixion. Um, what can we learn from the anonymous years? You know, in winter seasons when God, as this is a paraphrase, um, withdraws all advertisement. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you might have been a someone and then you're in the season of being a no one. Is that punishment or is that preparation mm -hmm. for the next mm -hmm. season? And so can you please mm -hmm. help anyone who wants yes. more enlightenment on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Number one, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. I would take any opportunity just to be with you and mm -hmm. to be able to connect with. Uh, it's really a special gift to me for thank you. So with Anonymous, mm -hmm. one of the beautiful things that God captured my heart with in doing this study is that everything that we honor about Jesus, everything we study, everything in his life that we want to model, mm -hmm all of the things that are visible rest upon those 30 invisible years where that were basically mostly undocumented, uncelebrated. Mm -hmm. And in those wow. seasons, he was entirely underestimated, overlooked. Mm -hmm. And I started to think about as my soul began to sink deeply into the study, mm -hmm. how we tend to view those seasons of anonymity and those seasons of hiddenness as a waste of time as something to get through, to get past, to get on with what we're really here for, the main event, which mm -hmm. is somewhere out there. Mm -hmm. And yet, obviously, this indestructible strength that we so mm -hmm. honor in Jesus' life, mm -hmm. in his visible years, mm -hmm. it grew in that hidden place, that those mm -hmm. seemingly barren spaces. Mm -hmm. They are really the birthplace of Jesus-style indestructible strength. Mm -hmm. And I think that perhaps we, more than previous generations, yeah. struggle to believe that because we the pressure yes it's more than ever before it's huge mm -hmm. and we've also decided that in our sensory rich world mm. to determine whether or not we are blessed by god whether or not we're under the favor of god mm -hmm. through the window of our senses mm. and in the winter or you might use the illustration of the desert mm. you tend to see less and feel less and hear less, mm -hmm. which is why we tend to think, oh, well, summer, those seasons of abundance, that's God's favor, that's God's blessing, that's a reward. Mm -hmm. But winter, winter's a punishment. Psalm 74, verse 17, Asaph says, God, you made both summer and mm -hmm. winter. Mm -hmm. Bible words, <laughs> like they're both there and they're good. Yes. Yep. Yes. And so God is equally mm -hmm. present in every mm -hmm. moment. And which means he's equally mm -hmm. present in summer as he is in winter. He's mm -hmm. as present in those moments where we feel wonderful and we feel abundant mm -hmm. as in those moments where we feel um, barren and mm -hmm. um, it's even dark. I actually think too, um, one thing that can help us all is to not be, ca be cave dwellers and not be isolated when, mm -hmm. when we're in winter mm -hmm. because it's very, it just feeds the I'm alone, mm -hmm. it's like winter, everything's dry. Um, I was a Bible college student in Sydney 20, doesn't matter how many, <laughs> 20 plus years ago. And um, 
I sat through um, a, an entire year on the Old Testament. I was so grateful because I never understood the Old Testament. It was like, so I just don't get it. I get Jesus, <laughs> I get Psalms, I get Proverbs, but the Old Testament's like, um, what? And so the, the teacher I had explained um, what he called left stage and right stage, which is um, when we experience blessing to not forget mm -hmm. that God was the one who brought us blessing. And we, when we experience um, a stage of where there's retraction mm -hmm. or hardship, to not actually take that as a punishment yes. <laughs> because um, God is good. He's a yes, good he God. Yes. Uh, that Bible teacher was Jonathan, but... <laughs> Not supposed to date your students, mm -hmm. but never yes. mind. We got married. 21 years later, whatever. Oh. So um, I'm thinking about, okay, so a tree is pruned. The Bible mm -hmm. talks about a yes. tree is pruned when it is fruitful and a tree is pruned when mm -hmm. it is unfruitful. How do we, how do we read that? Because mm -hmm. when there's a pruning season, am I pruned because I'm doing like awesome? Mm -hmm. Or am I pruned because I'm like doing really bad mm -hmm. yes. how do we know well and I think sometimes we don't know for a while and that to me is part of the beauty and the reality of the mentoring of the Holy Spirit in our lives mm -hmm. uh, two trees can stand side by side and they may look very similar mm -hmm. but at their roots some very very different things can be happening mm -hmm. which encourage us to be to be cautious and judging anybody else's <laughs> situation but also, Ooh, okay. right? But it also um, encourages us that maybe really what we need to be concerned about is just that sim the simplicity of follow. Mm -hmm. When I look at Jesus' call throughout the scripture, mm -hmm. he calls us to follow, which means mm -hmm. that our yes isn't to scenery. Mm -hmm. And though this may um, settle uh, in, a, as a, in a difficult way with some people, it's not even to outcome. Follow is really more relational than it is directional. Follow isn't to scenery, it's to company. I kind of so, want to slow you down with every statement. <laughs> I'm like, no, can we just like, okay, uh, come back and do mm -hmm. like 10 different podcasts mm -hmm. on everything. Sorry to interrupt you, just oh, yeah. go, go, keep going. Oh. And so we tend to want to measure whether or not mm -hmm. we're following right or we're following well through the scenery. But scripture alone, mm. it gives us enough encouragement to be cautious mm. with that. Follow led John to the beheading block. Follow led Jesus to the cross. Follow led all of the greats in Hebrews 11 to very, very difficult places. Follow led Stephen into stoning. So really, can we measure whether or not our follow is on track by the outcome? Not according to the scriptures, but mm. I think we can by the love growing in our hearts, mm -hmm. by both ways. That mm -hmm. uh, we are growing in love for God, yes, but simultaneously we're growing in that sense of being the beloved mm -hmm. of God. Those two mm -hmm. things really need to grow as a duet. That mm -hmm. to me is the tell. Am I growing in love? Some people may look and say, oh boy, she's in a really fruitful season. Other people may look and say, oh, she should be doing more. It really doesn't matter the tell is going to be what so transformed everybody who got near Jesus. That mm -hmm. love that produced mm -hmm. an mm -hmm. internal authority mm -hmm. that changed the atmosphere, whether he was in the desert, or he was in the streets, mm -hmm. or he was surrounded by crowds, or alone in prayer. Just, I'm processing. <laughs> uh, so processing. Um, I love you. Mm, oh, I love you too. Okay, I feel friend. like you just need to come back. We need to do a few sessions. Oh, I'd love, to, love to. Happy <laughs> so, to. So, um, wow. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about you know, a good tree produces good fruit, mm -hmm. bad yes. tree, bad fruit. Yes. And I was having a conversation with somebody um, actually just last week who's a new ministry friend who's phenomenal mm. and she'll be with us soon. Um, and she had talked about... Um, in a certain ministry setting, she looked at this big production side of what was available and could not, it was not, a, it wasn't just not attractive to her, it was unsustainable to her. And, and I went into a zone because I'm thinking, well, production is a Bible word, 
but performance isn't. Mm -hmm. And so I, I said to my friend, um, I'm not, I said, uh, how about this? It's not production, performance is the thing that bothered you. Mm -hmm. Because you can have a lot of performers and all of their team are the ones who produce. Mm -hmm. But when you stand before Jesus, it's actually really simple. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm simple folk. Mm -hmm. And so um, I love the thought that if we can stay close to Jesus, mm -hmm. I mean, you have said so many profound things since I've known over the years. Um, what is the problem? The problem problem is distance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Should I jump into that one? Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like I just said something completely <laughs> random. I took us nowhere. I apologize. But I just, mm. I yeah, love, like, we could, we, we, we're going to continue to talk for hours. Mm -hmm. Not with you because we're going to be finishing soon. But talk about the distance thing because that is mm -hmm. profound. Okay. Well, when you think about Jesus' example, um, Jesus called the desert his friend. It shaped him. He kept returning to it. All of the words that are translated solitary place when he went away to pray, that's the same Greek word, eremos. Mm -hmm. We look at John the Baptist. He grew in the desert. And so these kind of desert experiences are really mentors of our soul. Mm -hmm. So a wise woman that I was mentoring, she was in my 12-month, seventh-year program, and she said, all right, Alicia, you talk about the deserts, you talk about pain as though they are a friend. And she said, but Satan's goal is pain. So how can I therefore call it a friend? Brilliant question. Mm -hmm. And this was my response. Yeah. I'd like to suggest to you that Satan's goal isn't pain, that his goal is distance. His goal is creating distance between us and God, us and one another, and even within profound. our own selves. That's, that is profound. Uh, so help, yes. help anyone who's watching. Yes. Like yes. give us some like how to not allow mm -hmm. that to happen. Yes. Well, since his goal is creating distance, mm -hmm. he can use pain or pleasure equally, right? He can use success or failure equally. Mm -hmm. And so if his goal is creating distance, then what's our strategy against that? It's decreasing distance. Mm -hmm. It is moment by moment, minute mm -hmm. by minute, living in intimacy with him, regardless of whether our senses are confirming it. Mm -hmm. My senses don't create God's presence, which means my greatest shout doesn't thicken him, my greatest doubt does not thin him. Whether I see stars, I feel nothing, it changes mm -hmm. him not. And so I mm -hmm. can develop the muscle of attentiveness to him because mm -hmm. he is profoundly present to me. We decrease distance with God. Mm. We decrease distance with one another. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we decrease distance within ourselves. That gap between who we truly are and who we present ourselves to others. Mm -hmm. And as we decrease that distance, we mm -hmm. are coming against what I believe is one of his primary strategies against our souls, our families, and our communities. I've got to say, um, you're just so wise and amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but We've only got a little bit of time okay. left. I want to mm -hmm. say um, thank you for contacting me mm -hmm. in a season where I was trying to find the deepest cave mm -hmm. I could dwell in. And when I received a text, oh, I'm, I'd love to have a cup of tea. I'm, I'm in town to have a cup of tea. All I wanted to do was trying to find a reason not to meet with you because I needed nothing more than you. Mm -hmm. And I knew I could see distance was going to help me buffer pain mm -hmm. from sharing with you a season that was the most painful season I've ever been through in my life. And I'm like, oh, I'm like a little old lady. And I'm like, please, can we? <laughs> I, thought, I thought all the drama was in my teenage years. And I so love the fact that... Um, I actually, I, I trusted God and I trust you mm -hmm. and I want to just really recommend that if you're in a season where that distant, you, you know, you, you can create it, you can keep it, you can preserve it, mm -hmm. um, press in at any cost. Um, it's not for everyone. I mean, you were the very first person I talked to mm -hmm. and <laughs> you got the, you got the, I'm like, I'm really not crazy. <laughs> But you got you got me, oh, and I was so I was so um, relieved. But I understand why people just want to like go on a ranch and like mm. <laughs> distance. But press in, yes, because 
it actually really helped with perspective. Mm. Yes. Because what you assured me is I'm not alone mm -hmm. and that God is faithful. And although the enemy likes to take a whack, um, God has a very strong backhand. Yes. So yes. we're out of time today. <laughs> um, do we want Alicia back? Audience, <laughs> cheer. <laughs> yes. We're going to be, um, I mean, I think you should just come here for a week and we just talk oh, all day, but love you delight. and love you too. Um, we'll be making sure everyone knows where to get your resource, how to find thank you online you. and um, you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. You are beautiful, my friend. See you next time. Thank you for joining us today on the Sister Leadership Podcast with Diane Wilson, recorded live from Orange County, California. If you'd like to subscribe, click on the link below, dianewilson.com, and we'll see you next week.